basketball fans, it's me, DC, here for Fantasy Basketball Analyzer. And we're getting ready for week 17 of the NBA season. And full disclosure, I'm pre-recording this episode. So normally I record Saturday, put it out Saturday, all that. It's actually, well, I guess it's Wednesday now because it's like 1.30 in the morning my time. But I have a plane flight in a few hours. And I don't want to leave you guys hanging this weekend. So I'm pre-recording it in the studio with the good mic and everything. So we're going to get into it, but... I mentioned that at the start because if something crazy happens, like a whole team's like week of games got canceled or something, I'm not going to know about it in the video, right? But we can still talk about pace and everything, so let's get into it. As we look at pace and defensive efficiency, obviously I don't have the most up-to-date games, right? So I'm a few games short of what we're looking for a Saturday sample. But at this point in the season, I think we really know who we're going to face. Those teams up top, teams at the bottom, like they're moving a little, you know, Philly got down into the 105s clippers there too so they're highlighting kind of in the pink the lighter shading that we do but i think we already know the good and bad matchups right chicago getting out of the 108s slightly i don't think we're saying oh because the bulls made this massive trade their defense improved so much it just shifted a little bit we still like them as a matchup and we take that and we apply it to the week to look at our matchups as we bring up the schedule grid to look at the strength of schedule We'll see that there's only eight teams that play three games and the rest play four. So the majority are on four. As always, we're playing for four games. No one's got the five as of right now to screw with that. And beyond that, looking at the details, no teams jumped out as having a really like awesome or terrible schedule, which there isn't always. But, you know, you look at something when I start shading these in, right? I'm applying looking at New Orleans. I'm like, ooh, good. They get to play Sacramento and Washington, but they also play the Knicks twice. When we're looking at the pace and deficiency, you know, it makes their week kind of average out. You'll still like that, but if you're in a daily change league, it gives you a little more oomph for it. And that's really going to come up with streaming this week because it's a pretty good streaming week if you can pick up the right pieces, but we're not there yet. Let's go look at the back-to-backs. As we bring up the back-to-backs, let's look, go through the usual suspects. Boston, no back-to-back, so we're not too worried about that. Detroit, yes, despite only having three games, they do have a back-to-back, so you're going to want to keep an eye on it. Like, does that mean Hayes is resting? Does that mean Hamadou Diallo is resting? I mean, Diallo just played on back-to-back, so hopefully he's getting back in there, and Hayes, they didn't say that this is going to be for all of the rest of the season, but I am monitoring that situation. Including this, they've got five back-to-backs left throughout the rest of the season here, so if you're losing games when it really matters in the playoffs, that's going to come up. Houston, they kind of have a back-to-back, right? That last game of the week, that Orlando game, that's the start of a back-to-back, so we're not too worried about them resting anyone there. Clippers, yes, they got a back-to-back, but they haven't been resting guys lately. Not because of that. Their guys get sore or whatever, but it hasn't been, like, guaranteed the way prior years, right, with Kawhi. Lakers, not healthy enough to really rest people, but, yes, they have a back-to-back. Miami, yes, and they have two back-to-backs, but we're still... Not too worried about that there for Miami's team. And Washington, yes, they have a back-to-back, but Westbrook's been playing on back-to-back, so it's just a matter of habit that I keep tracking it in case something changes. The interesting thing with back-to-backs this week, normally I'm talking about it of, oh, hey, stay away or be careful a guy might rest. But you might have an advantage to try and make, you know, less roster moves this week in particular, try and do it. At the end of the week, there's two days you could stream. Saturday and Sunday, there's six games and eight games, and I'm getting ahead of myself. We'll talk about it as a streaming page. But no one has that Saturday, Sunday back-to-backs right now, so you can't do that. So honestly, if you're trying to get a jump on it, you actually want to jumpstart your week. Monday, Tuesday has nine games, six games. If you pick up any of those teams, so say, like, look at the Lakers, it's the Knicks and Charlotte. You're not, like, super pumped about the matchups. For fantasy, I mean. But if you can go, like, grab a Laker or grab Phoenix, something like that, Utah, teams that have a back-to-back, both of those. In fact, Utah gets Washington and OKC. So that'd be kind of fun. If you could pick someone up there, you get a single move, you get two games right off the bat. Utah is playing two sets of back-to-back, so you might be able to get a use, but probably not Friday. And that takes us to the streaming. So I already spilled the beans, but let's start with the streaming like we always do of me reading off how many games they play. <laughs> Monday, 9, Tuesday, 6, 12, 4, 11, 6, 8. So Wednesday and Friday, you're just not going to be able to stream in all likelihood, right? Because 12 games, 11 games, that's just most of the teams are playing. You're probably not going to get guys from the bench there. So Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday is what you want to attack. Particularly on Thursday, there's only four games. So any team that happens to have a game going, 
you're probably going to get that guy in. So I would kind of try and target that. That's how I build out highlighting this week, right? I went up from Thursday as kind of the backbone of your streaming plan. And then I highlighted out to Saturday and Tuesday. So if you're picking up guys, you want to try and hit on all of them. And you can see a couple teams check all the boxes. Boston only plays three games, but they're all on the streaming days. Lakers have four games and three of them are on the streaming days. And then Phoenix, who gets three games on all the streaming days. And they get Sacramento right there in the middle of the week, the day you can really attack. So maybe there's an option there. Pick up Crowder right now as of recording is like 40% rostered. So it depends on what you want. Like, unfortunately, if I'm talking about like with Lakers, Boston, and Phoenix, there's maybe not that many people out on the waiver wire for you to pick up and do it. But if you can get ahead of it and get the extra games in there, you're definitely going to get to play them in your daily change leagues on Thursday. And that'll do it. Just our quick normal primer for week 17. If something changed and it's not updated here, leave a comment or hit me up on Twitter. I'll see it. I will keep updating the grid. The link is down below. So as the week's going on, I will keep these things up to date if anything's moving. And otherwise, I'll see you on Sunday for the waiver show. Not from the studio, but I'll still be coming at you. Go out and win your week. Thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far, please hit the like button and leave a comment down below. It helps me grow the channel. If you want more videos like this, hit subscribe or even the little bell will give you alerts. And I'll be back soon with another video for you.